Today I'm going to be taking a look at this portable karaoke machine from Yamaha. This is their handy karaoke. I suppose it's only handy if you're looking for a portable karaoke machine. If you're not, it's probably inconvenient. And it's also known as the Ings. Yeah, strange name. Not too sure what that's about, but here's an advert. Yamaha Ings, Now, some people watching this might be experiencing a touch of deja vu right now, but no, I haven't covered this particular device previously. However, a couple of years ago, I did look at the Korg Hi Caro, which was a very similar device in that it was a portable battery powered karaoke machine that stored its music on solid state cartridges. So that's probably the one you're thinking of. This is a more recent machine than that. And let's see what it does. Now, it'll come as no surprise that I imported this from Japan and I believe they only sold them over there. And yet, with the exception of the text that's on the cartridge here, all the other legends that are printed on here are in English, which is helpful to me when it comes to operating it, but it often leads to some confusion in the YouTube comments where people ask, why is the text in English if it was sold in Japan? The answer is because that's how they do things over there. If you go and look at an old Nintendo Famicom, you'll see that it has Start and Select printed on it, even the ones that were made just for the Japanese market. It's just how they like to do things. Right, so I've got the 50 song cart that's inside the machine and then these four cartridges here, each of which contain another 50 songs. So I was looking through all the titles that are listed on here to see if there are any that I recognised. And unfortunately, there's nothing that jumps out at me. But let's just play some of these. The thing with this is though, that it doesn't have a speaker on it. I've got somewhere to plug my microphone in at the bottom. In fact, I've got somewhere to plug two mics in there. Okay, I've got the speakers attached, so you can hear the startup jingle now that goes along with the animation on the screen. Now, I've been advised that Rusty Nail by X Japan would be an interesting one to test, so that's number 48. Let's have a listen. Okay, let me just give you a quick tour of these controls. Well, obviously mic levels, the mic volume, echo on the mic can be selected there as well. We can adjust the key of the song or the tempo. So I'll start a song playing so you can hear that in action. Also down here, we can turn on the backlight for the display. And there's two equalization standards for the audio, car or home. The car one has less bass on it. And then this is the melody assist. Now the melody assist is quite interesting in that it brings in a melody that you can follow along with for the vocals. So if I switch it on at the moment, once this song's got past the intro, you'll be able to hear the melody assist in action. Just have a listen now. And now I'll switch it off. See, the melody's gone. So that's what that really does. So we'll just adjust the key up and down. If you want to zero it, you just press both buttons together. Same with the tempo. Now I'll just stop that there. If we wanted to program in a load of tracks, we use these buttons here. You can program in say track 42 and enter that then track 43 go back to this track. So we've got a three song playlist now. And if we were to press this, it would start at the first one, press next, it moves on to the next one, etc. So we'll just stop that there. We could also randomize the track that we're playing if we want. Now you'll have seen this down here, game, and you might be expecting that there's some kind of interesting game in here. Uh, you'd be disappointed. Let's just uh, press game. Just have a listen to this. It plays a tune at a rapid rate. 
and it's up to you to guess that title. Now if I press next here, no is it entry I think, it'll show the answer. This is what we're listening to. So I'll do that again, we'll just move on to a different tune. And um, I think the idea is that one person picks the tune, presses play, and the other person has to guess the tune that's being played. And then if you just press this, it'll play at the normal speed. So that's the first game, not very exciting. The next one, well, bingo. Yeah, um, now all it does is it acts as a bingo caller. So if I press that button now, it comes up with a bingo number, N34. N43, oh, we might get a line here, N31. But you get the idea, so you get a, a device that can do random bingo numbers for you. Is that something that you really need? Is this uh, something that would have been popular at the time? I really don't know, but yeah, those are both the games. We'll just bring the mic up now. Okay, so I'm talking through the mic now. You can hear that coming in. And we've got quite a bit of echo on there. If I turn it all the way up to the maximum, there you go. That's what that sounds like. And I'll take the echo off. Of course, the echo is used to hide the fact that you've got a terrible singing voice. So for me, echo all the way up all the time. Okay, now track 47 on here is Linda Linda. And some people might recognize this from the Nintendo DS game. I forgot what it's called. The one that's like Elite Beat Agents where you tap on the screen. It's quite prominent in that game, but let's just have a quick listen. Now there's two things about this that surprised me a little bit. The first one is that there's nowhere to clip the microphone to it, which seems a bit odd. But the second one is that there's no headphone output or line out as a three and a half mil socket. Of course you can convert those, but I suppose the idea was really that you're gonna use this more often than not. If you were in a car especially, this is the FM transmitter output. So we've got a choice of 76.7 or 76.3, which of course are lower than your average radio in the UK would go on FM. So I haven't got a normal UK radio that would be able to pick up those frequencies, but I do have a Japanese one here. So let's have a look. So of course this is how you'd be using it in your car, but you could also use it in your house like this. Uh, 76.3, there we go. Ah, right. Oh, we've got some lyrics. La la la, zinkel vlinders. La la la, la la la, recline vlinders. So far, this handy karaoke isn't really living up to its name because I haven't found any songs that I could sing along with. All the songs in here have Japanese lyrics. I was hoping that perhaps something would come along that I'd recognise. Every now and then you find an English language title, but when you click on it, it isn't the song that you think it is. For example, Only You isn't the Yazoo song. And Gloria isn't the Laura Branigan song, they're just songs with the same title. But I'm working my way through these cartridges, hoping to find something. For example, oh, is this Jumping Jack Flash? Let's find out, let's get that one playing. No, it's Jumping Jack Boy. And they think, well, may maybe it's got some English language lyrics with it having an English language title. So you wait through the intro uh, for the title to come up on the screen. The song lyrics should appear any second now. Hopefully these are in English. No, <laughs> yeah, not going to be able to sing along with that. But while I've got it in my hand here, I'll just mention, of course, this is designed to be portable. We've got this knobbly bit here to rest your palm on. There's a section on the back to put your fingers into so you can hold it in one hand like that while you hold the microphone in this one. But of course, I'm using it in the home at the moment. And indeed, if you look at the top here, as well as the audio outputs, we've got a video output there. So what happens when you plug that into a television? Well, let me show you. Well, this is a much better interface. Now it's on the TV screen. You can see six titles at a time here, and it's easy to scroll through them to pick the one you want. Let's just go into those games. So this is that first one again with the sped up music that you have to guess the title. Still doesn't really make any sense to me that one. So we'll move on to the next one. Now this is the bingo. And if I press start here, you can see it's picking the numbers out now. 
again, I'm not quite sure who wanted to use one of these things to host a bingo night, but if that's what they're into, then this will do it. So we'll go back to the music again, though. Let's pick a title out that looks like it might have some English language lyrics on. Oh, there we go. Song for USA. Surely that's got some. Let's press play. Oh, they've got nice little animations on here as well. I just uh, Let's just go back a minute. As we go through each one of these, you'll see, as it's, I presume, decompressing the audio at the beginning of each title, you get a little animation popping up. There's uh, five or six of these, just to show the sort of passage of time, whether it's a clock or a candle burning. But let's go back to that title we had before, Song for USA. Now, they come up with a title of who the song's by, and that's the lyrics going across there now, so we've got no hope again. Yeah, forget that one. Let's pick a different one. Now you can see my low battery indicator showing at the bottom of the screen there, so I'll have to swap those out in a minute. But I just wanted to show you this. When you start a track that has quite a long intro at the beginning, before any lyrics have to come in, they fill that time in by putting some little animations on the screen. And there's a, a random variety of these. For example, at the moment, we've got a couple of worms appearing on the screen. But if we start that again, I've seen a chick, a crab, a penguin, um, a turtle. I'll we'll see what we get this time round. I think there's quite a few of these that can pop up. It's a bit of a playful thing. There's the penguin. And uh, you'll see in a second, it'll fall over. Oh, done it off the screen. But this is quite a bit of time we have to fill in. It only seems to load in one of these animations each time. So it's going to be playing this one quite a few times before we get to the lyrics. Now, when the lyrics appear, it's just as you'd expect. All the text is appearing on the screen and it's changing colour as you're supposed to sing it. But yeah, again, we haven't got much chance of singing that one. So let me just swap these batteries out. And I have found a track on this cartridge which seems to have English lyrics, although they don't make an awful lot of sense. Bam, 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 one day wearing so many wares. So many chapeaux and so many ties. Bam, bam, bam. One day wearing so many wares, so many chapeaux, and so many ties. We'll just switch that off because I want to plug a different thing into this TV. So I've got another device that takes these Yamaha cartridges. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so the model number of this was the HK1. This is the HK10. So that's the Handy Karaoke 10. Now, when I first saw this, I thought it was some kind of accessory for the HK1, but now I think it's probably a standalone device that's more designed for attaching to a television permanently rather than being portable. But I haven't opened it up yet, so let's take a look. Now, with any luck, there might be another packing cartridge with this one that will hopefully this time have some recognisable tunes on it, but we'll find out. It is second hand, so it's quite possible that everything like that's already been taken out. Well, there's a lot of stuff in here, so we've got a, a better quality microphone. Plasticky though, but uh, you can see it's a little bit better. We've got the AV leads there. Ah, is that a cartridge? Right, so that's a different one. Hold on, is that the same as that one? No, no, I haven't got that one. Different colour. Okay, cool. Power brick. Okay, so we've got quite a few things at the bottom of the box there. And one of them is this, volume 11 of this catalogue for the Yamaha Ings system. So it must have been around for quite a while, this. But if we have a look in here, we've got a portable device there and our HK10, which we've just opened up. But also for the HK10, you can add on this unit here, which takes uh, five cartridges and enables you to select them by the push of a button and it interfaces on the side of this with this expansion port here. So really quite a comprehensive system this and going through here you can see there's a lot of titles for it. Each of these was 3,500 yen, that's volume 18 up there, but it isn't just 18 cartridges because there's quite a few sort of special ones in amongst these as well. There's, I recognise the name of that group, SMAP. So that'll be their hits, no doubt. Or is it SMAP? I'm probably saying the wrong thing. But anyway, yeah, there's a load of cartridges for this. A lot more than I thought. I thought it was a bit of a flash in the pan, but no. We've got a date there. So this catalogue, if you can see that, 
October 97. So this looks like a list of artists together with the titles that are available on this format and what cartridge those titles are on. I recognise X Japan there because we played Rusty Nail earlier on, so X Japan's Rusty Nail is on P11, but they've also got a couple of others in there as well. So yeah, quite a lot of titles here. Right, brilliant. Okay, so moving past that, we've got our registration documents, we've got our instructions, we've got an envelope to send our registration documents off in, and then this is the card for this card. And looking down here, well, straight off, I can see one that says Disney there. Yeah, so 33 is translated to Hi Ho, so I think we know which Disney tune that is. And 37 is Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Well, brilliant. We've got two now in the English language. And is there anything else that's jumping out on here? <laughs> 008, full of breasts. I don't think that's a good translation. Uh, Fumbling Santa Claus, number four. Hmm, wonder what that one is. If you saw this for the first time, you'd think it was a really interesting little mini games console, but whilst it does play games, unfortunately it's the exact same ones as the other one, as in the bingo and that annoying music game, and the rest of the software is identical. In fact, the controls do all the same things as well. The only part of this that is in any way different to the handheld one, other than the fact it doesn't take batteries, is this button up here, which selects that cartridge. If I press it now, you can see the screen refreshes. Effectively, it's like a reboot on this machine at the moment, but if you had that side attachment on with the other cartridges, when you press those buttons, it would select those instead. So that's really the only difference on this one. I'll be honest, I'm no big Disney file, but I'd heard the song before, so I thought, oh, I'll sing along with that. I'll just get the lyrics up, and um, have you ever... Look to the lyrics for Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Salagaduda Mekichigbula Bib. No, it's not going to happen, that one. Um, might as well sing one of the Japanese ones as do that. Right, I think that's enough for the kids' music. Let's put one of these other cartridges in again because somebody recommended a song from Anri on this particular one, which is I Can't Stop the Loneliness, which is track. 12. The trouble with playing these is that they're very likely to hit content matches now because if they're popular songs and these are renditions of them that are done very accurately they're going to match with the composition if not the original recording. So I'll play you a little bit of this and then I think we should try and play the only one that I've got lyrics for. At least I think I've got lyrics for. A proper one anyway, not those Disney ones. So uh, let's just have a quick listen to this. Take a look inside, see what kind of chips it's using. Now, of course, I'm doing this for the people who are interested in this kind of thing. I don't really care very much about this at all, but I know some people do. So what I'll do, I'll show you close-ups of all these chips that are in here. There's a couple from Hitachi, a couple of other different manufacturers in there, and of course, mostly Yamaha. In amongst those Yamaha chips will be the main synthesizer chip and perhaps some others besides. So they're all flashing up on the screen now, and that's what's inside this device. That's what it uses. Right. Let's move on. Right, number two, Wink, Turn It Into Love is a song that Kylie Minogue sang as Turn It Into Love. I'm not familiar with it. Either the Wink or the Kylie Minogue version. I, I wasn't really paying attention to that kind of music. Okay, I don't think you can have enough echo, can you? Ah, yes, Stock Aitken and Waterman, brilliant. I say brilliant. I don't think anyone's ever said that before. I'll tell you what. I think I should get the portable one out and do this as it was originally intended to be done, according to the advert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
with all my friends out in the car because um, that's what looks like a lot of fun. I'm going to get everyone together and we're going to go and sing a song.